Welcome to Black and Gold Digital Edition, a behind the scenes look at your Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi, and welcome to week 11 of our digital show. I'm Jay Pushkin alongside Mike Fenner and Ken Urbanski. And gentlemen, it wasn't a pretty game. It was a messy conditions at Heinz Field, but the Steelers and the Lions, well, they tied 16-16. So even though it wasn't a, a loss or a win, it was a tie, but boy, the attitude after the game felt like a loss. Yeah, certainly not some upbeat spirits, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. not the result you wanted. I guess it could have been worse, like you said. It you know, wasn't the result you didn't want, but certainly nobody came into the day thinking that was even on the table, so especially uh, not Najee Harris, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Kent, so many missed opportunities, especially over right. time. It's just got to be a real kick to the gut. Yeah, my, the my only question is why don't they have these overtime games in September when it's nice and warm out? <laughs> right. Make me endure 10, 15 more minutes of crappy, rainy weather. and you know. So, but yeah, I mean, nobody wants a tie. Neither one of the teams want a tie, you know. So, I, th I think at the end of the day, they want to they want to see a winner and a loser. It doesn't help anybody, you know. And certainly down the road, it could probably hurt the Steelers mm -hmm. if it comes down to a playoff bid. And I can remember the day um, when it came down to that, standing on the field after the game, watching the Ravens and and the Browns play to see who was going to win that game in order to whether Steelers were going to be in or, in or out, mm -hmm. and they were out. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. And Mike, mm -hmm. as you were alluding to, Najee Harris just not sure about the overtime rules, but now he knows that <laughs> you can get a tie after 10 minutes yeah. of play. <laughs> Anyways, the Steelers now turn the page. They're heading out west to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. And, Ken, this mm -hmm. is another primetime matchup for them. This will be the third primetime game for them this season. And this one's got a lot of implications just because of how stacked the AFC is right now with mm -hmm. teams that are trying to not only jockey for divisional leads, but, you know, that ever-elusive wild card standing. Yeah, I think they need to um, pull away with another sneaky win, so to speak, uh, out there in order to stay relevant especially against an AFC foe war down the line, that might make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough for them to go in there. They got with the rash of injuries, COVID, who knows if Ben's playing or not, you know. Um, and then, then you have Minka out. That's huge. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, but they have, they, the, the Chargers have some injuries, too. They have people out with COVID, and I don't know if Bosa's playing. or. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I think the Steelers are going to really have to – rely on Najee Harris to, to carry the ball a little more than what he did in, in the last game. I'm concerned about it because the Bears, run, or not the Bears, but the Lions defense, run defense wasn't all that good. Mm -mm. And the Steelers had trouble there. I mean, what are they going to do on the road? So, but I'm, uh, that's, that's got to be the game plan. You got to feed Najee more than 22 times. Yeah. And, and if it is Mason, you can't have your backup quarterback thrown 50 times in a game. Yeah. You know, that's just way too many. Mike, you were down at practice earlier this week, and what kind of mood, what kind of vibe were you getting from the, from the practices themselves? As we've mentioned, you know, Ben didn't play last week because of COVID. Mika Fitzpatrick's going to be out for the foreseeable future. I mean, overall, is it just that, that cliche, next man up, and guys are getting ready for Sunday? The, the theme was that they kept saying, we're going to work with the guys that are here. And obviously, the virtual work for Ben Roethlisberger is a concern. You don't know if he's going to play, how ready he's going to be if he's able to. But they're preparing as if Mason Rudolph's going to be the guy on Sunday night. And there's, hey, he's here. He's taking the one reps. He's the guy we're going to work with. And it goes for everybody that's out there or not out there. It's, they're, they're getting ready for, to prepare for what they have, not what they wish they had out there. So uh, they're just trying to wipe this one clean, even though, like we said, it's, it's a tie, not a loss. But still, these guys know how important this stretch is upcoming. And, you know, Cam Haber was talking about that, too. There's plenty of football left to be played, especially division football, mm -hmm. AFC football. It's a mm -hmm. tough schedule, of course, but the opportunities sit there in front of them with how bunched up the AFC is with going into this week's Thursday night game. Every single team outside of the bottom four and the top team in the AFC, you've got 11 teams bunched up between five and six wins. So really, I mean, it's almost like a whole new season starting right now for the Steelers and for everybody in the AFC. And I think they got kind of lucky with some of the other teams in their division sure. tripping up a little bit. No you doubt. Know, had they like put some separation there, I, I think Steelers would be in trouble. Cleveland yeah. and Baltimore, those yeah. are huge losses right, this week, yeah. especially no one expected Baltimore to right. lose to Miami, but I guess, you know. And no one's even talking about Cincinnati <laughs> anymore. They, they went exactly. back to being the Bengals. They right? were the flavor so, of the month yeah. just three weeks <laughs> so, ago, and now it's so, like, ah, they're right in the middle yeah. of the pack too. Yeah, everyone's just kind of laying in the weeds right now and right. trying to make that move. And it just feels like deja vu because if there's any franchise that can handle this, it is Pittsburgh because two years ago they had to go out to the Chargers. They faced them with a backup quarterback in Devlin mm -hmm. Hodges, and they came away with a victory. So if anybody that can kind of formulate a game plan, it's the Steelers. No doubt. I mean, this is a week you hope you can win the turnover battle. You get 
maybe a special teams, uh, you know, burst or some sort of play like that can, that can make a difference if you have to go with Rudolph. But you expect in a burst from Ray Ray McLeod, huh? Of course. You know? And maybe a, a huge <laughs> All impact. All those targets. Yeah, exactly. A huge impact play from Chris Boswell that we haven't seen so far. You know, maybe right. not a fumble recovery or a, a pass attempt. Maybe a rush this week. Who knows? Right. Ken, how important is it for them to get off to a good start? Like they did two years ago. They came yeah. out, you know, lightning in a bottle, 17 points. They led 24 nothing. I mean, how critical is that for them going there this time around? Because I think back then when they were playing with Duck Hodges and guys like that, they went in there with nothing to lose. So mm -hmm. they opened the playbook up and they That's just, true. you know, they just went for it. I think they need to do that here, you know. The Chargers aren't good at stopping the run, you know. So expect, even if Bosa's in there, they're, they're, they're not doing that well. Uh, they, 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 they stopped the Vikings a little bit, but before that they were giving up. You well, know, when two, Cleveland went out there right, they earlier in the season, over. they ran all over them. Yeah. Right, so they're going to, you know, if you can do that, sustain drives and uh, take time off the clock, limit their opportunities. I like their chances, and especially, you know, I think in similarity with, with, uh, with, their, with their Herbert, I don't think they let him throw the ball downfield too much, even with Mike Williams and guys. He's he's doing a lot of dinking and dunking and maybe medium you know, range, medium stuff, range yeah. stuff too. So especially I think, after the first month of the season, they were, they looked like they were rolling, and yeah, then it seems like they yeah, really they kind dialed of back on exactly. that for some reason. I don't get that don't with a guy with a big arm like that. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they open it up, try to open it up with the Steelers without Fitzpatrick in there. But I think that's going to open up some opportunities for picks. Mike, looking into the crystal ball, mm. what do Pittsburgh need to do to get this one? Uh, I think just it's got to be getting pressure on Justin Herbert, being creative in terms of trying to get after him, confuse him. Still is a younger type quarterback. We're not talking about a rookie, but still a guy that's relatively new to the league. Try to create some pressure, disguise some things defensively up front, some games. And uh, Austin Eckler is dangerous out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. you got to be ready for him to catch passes and try to make sure you're defending horizontally across the field because he's a guy that can really – Dice up defenses, just taking advantage of all 53 and a half yards across the field. So I think those are huge factors. Tim, what about you? It's called tackle football. Yeah. Right. Make Grab the, somebody. Right. Else. Make yeah. a tackle. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired of seeing these guys just throw themselves at, 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 at runners and, and just expect them to go down. These these are big, solid, strong mm -hmm. guys. You got to wrap them up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's old school. You got to, you know, you got to get them around the legs and take them down, or they're gone. You know, we've seen that in the last couple of games. We'll see how it all shapes up mm. on Sunday night. Should be a good one, at least mm. on paper, as both teams trying to battle for better seating mm. and positioning in the AFC playoff standing. So, for Mike Fenner and Ken Urbanski, I'm Jay Pushkar. Mm. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week for Black and Gold Digital Edition.